Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Mike Sowers and thanks for tuning in for the CIG Value Add Fund One Tranche One presentation. If you haven't already watched the Value Add Fund Investor Dinner Replay video, that gives you a really good overview of the fund. In today's video, on today's call, we have 35 investors most of which have subscribed to this fund. So today I'm actually gonna just go through some of the details of the exact properties we have under tranche one here. I'm super excited, but if you are a newcomer and are not familiar with us or our brand, welcome. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy life to check out what we have going at Commercial Investors Group. And I think you're gonna find that we lay things out in a fairly simple manner, but I'd like to invite you to contact me personally on my cell phone or on my email to answer any questions that you might have to help you evaluate the opportunity. My email is mike at commercialinvestorsgroup.com and my cell phone is 612-598-0780. Can also text me there. So let's get started with this. Um, so starting off, you know, I just want to make a disclaimer here. Basically, the, the, the rules around securities are that I can only make an offer to invest through a private placement memorandum, and that is available on our investor site. I'll send you guys out a link for that. So this presentation is just for informational purposes. With that being said, here's what we're going to cover today. I'm going to introduce you to my team. We're going to talk about how the fund is structured. We're going to go through the four really cool office and warehouse properties we have under contract. And then we're going to talk about how you can get involved if you want to get involved. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Mike Sowers. I'm uh, grown and raised here right in the Twin Cities. I went to the Carlson School of Management, got a degree in entrepreneurship and finance. And I started a remodeling company coming out of college. And I grew that uh, to a little over 50 employees. And then I scaled back down and I exited out of that company in 2017. Uh, all those years, I was flipping houses. So I did a lot of house flips. We did a little over a thousand projects in that time frame. And then I started doing commercial properties and I found them to be so much more fun and exciting that I completely exited out of the residential game. And I went all in on the commercial game. Since then, we've done over $200 million in commercial deals. We also host the Creative Commercial Real Estate Podcast. Uh, check that out. Lots of great guest speakers on there and cool content. If you're interested in really learning this business uh, and figuring out if it's right for you, a lot of really cool guests on there. And then also, if you haven't checked out my book, that's available hardcover, softcover, and the audiobook version on Amazon. Uh, but if you email me, I'd be happy to get you a free digital or audio book copy of that if you want a free copy. But for me, I'm a paper between the fingers kind of guy. So I have that, but I've been investing for many, many years and uh, we have a really good system in place. And I teach that system in my book. And in fact, our system has been so successful that we actually started franchising our company. We've opened locations in Denver. We have Nashville and Wisconsin coming online and some in California and Florida. We are officially the only commercial real estate investing franchise system on planet earth. So we have some great things going on. You have to obviously have a few things figured out if you're going to start franchising your business. Um, and that's, what's exciting. So let me tell you about my project team. James is our president. He's been with me. He was a Carlson guy with me and uh, he's really been at the forefront. I, I saved him from the corporate world. We'd like to laugh about that. And uh, just a, a great friend and a really smart and shrewd businessman. And James is basically at the forefront of all of our operations. So he runs everything A to Z. Um, and I'm the visionary and I oversee a lot of the systems development. Katie just joined our team. I'm really excited for her. Uh, we have a lot of growth that's happening at our company. So we brought her on as the director of marketing and HR. She's actually going to oversee a, a phone room and we have a full team of appointment setters and business development reps that we're grooming and we'll be growing that. Uh, Mark Gettinger, he is our operations manager. He's going to be overseeing all the project management and property management for all of our new acquisitions. We're growing out a team of uh, maintenance technicians, carpenters, a lot of uh, assistant operations personnel, and really making sure that we have our operational division up to speed. And we also outsource a lot of project management 
and property management to outside firms. So we have a lot of great partners not listed here as well. As far as tax advice, Scott Johnson's a guy. He is a wizard when it comes to this stuff. And he's the one who really helped me architect this thing from A to Z. He's overseen a lot of these types of things. And we actually allow what's called 721 exchanges, which is where people contribute their property into our fund in exchange for membership units. And Brad's our attorney going forward here. Um, he is a, a very, very smart securities attorney. And he makes sure that everything that we're doing is on the up and up and make sure all of our filings and um, all of our documentations in order. So we have a superstar team and I'm excited to jump into some of the details for you here. Here's the overview of the fund. Really what the fund is, is it's an opportunity for people who have excess cash flow or who have a successful business or have net worth stuck in the stock market and they want something better. Really what it allows you to do is diversify away from the stock market and get double digit above average returns all sheltered by huge tax write-offs and then backed by the world's most time-tested and proven asset class known to man, real estate. What is sexier than owning commercial real estate properties? And what's even cooler is that our fund focuses on exploring and implementing our business plan, which is basically we buy underperforming commercial properties. We increase the underlying income stream. We put new systems and management in place. We fill all the vacancies and then we either refinance them, sell them or hold them for long term cash flow. For the fund, most of our stuff is all based on solving for value growth first and then getting long-term passive income on the back end. That's what's really cool about it. And you're going to see with the four properties here that there's a really good mix of cash flow and value growth. And so we have a good mix and that's why we call it value add. Um, mainly we're focused on office and warehouse, but we will do some strip malls and, and we have apartments as well that will be mixed in. We operate in Minneapolis, Denver, and Colorado Springs, but we will also be partnering on some deals in other markets as we expand into those locations. Uh, to be invested in the fund, you have to be accredited. That's a net worth of a million outside your personal home, 200,000 a year for the last two years, 300,000 if you're married. It's either A, net worth, or B, income. Uh, if you're not sure if you're accredited or not, I, uh, I can certainly help you in that area. And we, it's a hundred thousand minimum. Most people look at doing 250 or 500, but if you want to look at doing a hundred, you can certainly do that as well. This fund is a hundred million dollars in equity raised in tranches. This first tranche here is 5.725 million. You can see our target raised down on the bottom. And it's really, as I said before, a long-term wealth generation strategy. So right now, we're actually raising 7.725 million, but we have a $2 million investor who's coming in from a 1031 exchange. So we're doing what's called a tenants in common on that. So we've actually raised five and a half million dollars of the 7.7, but I'm not counting the, the 1031 exchange because that actually won't be titled in the fund. And then our exit plan is we wanna convert your shares in this operating partnership to a public REIT. You would never be forced to sell this position. Uh, this is really a long-term investment strategy. So if you're gonna need your money back in six or 12 months, probably not a great fit. But if you're looking for that sale off in the sunset, kind of retirement type income, you wanna pop a hundred grand in here every year for 10 years and have a really, really solid recurring revenue uh, to retire on, this would be a really great fit for you. And I think once you see our business plan and the types of properties that we've done in the past and the ones that we have coming up, you're gonna get really excited about this. So with that being said, uh, I'm gonna jump into tranche one here. This is a re-recording of this morning's, I forgot to record. So I'm gonna jump into now where I started uh, recording this morning. Properties touring them, making offers, uh, and then getting these deals under contract and managing them going forward. So this is kind of my bread and butter. Next slide, please. Okay, so here are the high level numbers on this thing. Again, it's it's almost it's it's almost stabilized uh, in in a sense. So the gross income right now 1.17 million as stabilized 1.38. This thing generates an NOI right now today is of 721,000. We're going to grow that about 10% to about 800,000. And you can see how that translates to value from 8 to 9 million. And again, I think we used a fairly conservative cap rate on this thing. 
some of the key renovation items that we're going to be doing. There's not a whole lot that has to be done. Probably the largest thing is replacing the roof in about five to seven years. We're going to repair underneath the siding on the exterior, and we're going to replace uh, the uh, with new siding. Um, there's some uh, some rotted wood under there. We're gonna we're gonna put in some new cement cement board there, and then put on new siding. And the seller is going to finish the carpeting uh, in the common areas here. Next slide. So we did a SWOT analysis on all these properties, and I'm just going to walk you through the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and the threats. For this thing, again, it's 95% occupied. We're going to move our headquarters in there, which is really exciting. So there's not a whole lot to really lease up on this thing. Great location. You can see it from the freeway. Uh, it's got great access, a lot of parking, and it has a big out lot that we could potentially redevelop um, or sell off. As far as opportunities go, we're going to build back some of the common area that hadn't been uh, billed to the tenants. So as we turn over tenants and, and uh, sign new leases, we'll build back some of that common area, driving up the NOI. Uh, we'll grow some rents over time as well. And there is a tenant there that owes some back rent. We're going to recapture that. Uh, and, and use that as well uh, to become part of the value of the building. Weaknesses on the building, you know, just need some minor updating. As far as threats go, default of a large tenant, you know, again, in this property, we have a great tenant mix uh, across multiple industries and, and larger and smaller businesses. So the, the chances, even if one tenant defaults, we're not in any jeopardy here of, of uh, having any harm to the value of the property. But it's something that we do manage. And then potentially a COVID wave. It's an office building. Everyone knows how that has gone. But we've, we've done really well through COVID. Uh, so if something like that happens again, I think we're well positioned. That's that property. Next slide, please. Okay, Maple Plain. Uh, again, that spectrum. This is more on the uh, more of the vacant side. Needs a bit more renovation. Uh, we'll look at some of the financials here. It's 136,000 square foot industrial. It's on 13 acres, which is really cool because you can see in the picture there on the right, we've got, uh, it's the largest piece of undeveloped land in Maple Plain. Maple Plain is about 10 minutes west of, uh, of Wyzetta, just south of Lake Independence, which you can see there as well. Next slide. All right, financials. So again, we have one tenant in there right now, which we're going to be retenanting uh, the rest of the building and, and working out uh, a lease deal with that tenant. Right now, this thing generates 183,000 as is NOI. We're gonna grow that significantly uh, through doing renovations as well as retenanting the building. So as stabilized, this thing will generate $680,000 in NOI. And you can see the value jump here, okay? 5.5 million uh, right now as is stabilized. Uh, we're gonna grow this thing to 8 million. I think we, again, we used a fairly conservative cap rate. Um, I think there's some additional room there. Some of the largest items that we're gonna be renovating here is exterior tuck pointing and doing a paint job. Uh, we're gonna asphalt the entire east side of the building. As you saw there, it's gravel around the east side of the building. And then on the front, we're gonna expand the lot there for the tenant. We're gonna have some phenomenal parking and lighting out on the east side as well for, for new tenants. So this thing is gonna look fantastic from the outside, which right now it's kind of an eyesore. It stands out certainly as you're driving highway 12 um, and uh, it's gonna look great afterwards. We're gonna replace the north half of the roof. The south side was done in 2014 and we'll do some interior improvements uh, as well to the building. Next slide. So this is an exciting building. Again, a lot of opportunity here to grow this thing uh, and stabilize it. It's a fun project. The strengths on it, strong industrial demand. That is no secret. Um, industrial as an asset class has been for performing extremely well. We're seeing rent rates actually creep up, uh, which they haven't done in years. Uh, they've kind of been at the same level uh, for quite a number of years. Um, Mike, you lost a slide there. Perfect. Thank you for bringing that up. <clears throat> so, Mike, why don't, do you want to jump in on this? Talk about our master plan here.
I guess it helps if I unmute myself. Um, so what we're looking at here is uh, a kind of a property map. And you can see the Eastern half of this property here is undeveloped right now. And there's some opportunities here. So we're gonna do a feasibility study and we've already talked to the city and engaged them. And uh, they wanna see a mixed use development here with apartments and maybe some commercial mix. So we're looking into some different options there. We're not raising any capital right now. Um, we're just gonna let the value of this land sit there and explore some different options. What we are gonna do is focus on getting the Western half of the land ready. The biggest thing right now is it looks like a dog when you pull up to it. So uh, tuck pointing and painting the outside is gonna make a tremendous difference as well as uh, installing brand new asphalt everywhere in red and adding a new access to the highway here and then a row of bushes along the highway. And then they got these three huge loading silos. I'm gonna see if I can get those tucked into this 25 foot setback over here, kind of hidden a little bit so that it looks a little more light industrial, a little more inviting, but this will be a hundred feet out, which is a nice turn radius for trucks to get in here. And basically this thing's gonna be four different bays. So you can see the roof is already split into four sections. The current tenants occupying about the Southern half, they, uh, they may keep half or they may go down to just one bay. We're hopeful to keep them and get a lease deal done. Um, but uh, certainly our pro forma doesn't rely on that. And uh, we'll be able to release this thing out. This is premium warehouse. It's 10 minutes west of Ridgedale Mall, directly on Highway 12. This is a good through location to serve all of Western Minnesota from a distribution standpoint. Really nice 24 foot clear ceilings. Once we get this thing shined up, it should lease out uh, in six to 12 months with some really nice tenants. Let me uh, get the other part of the presentation pulled back up here. Thanks for that, James. Yeah, thanks, Mike. So uh, as Mike mentioned here, a lot of opportunities. Um, the uh, Really the only threat on this building here once stabilized is, is probably zoning changes, but we've worked with the city and, and it's zoned as mixed use. So uh, there's a lot of tenants that we can bring into this building, including light industrial. So it's a great property. Look forward to this project. Next slide. So let's talk about Century Office Park. This is in Woodbury, right off of Highway 94 and Century Drive. So just to the west of Radio Drive. Uh, again, this thing's directly across the freeway from 3M. So they used to occupy this. They have their old campus there um, across the uh, highway. So this 165,000 square feet of suburban office. As you can see here in the picture, you'll see the three buildings to your left. They have some solar arrays on uh, two of the buildings there. Um, so it's three buildings and then you have a, a skyway here uh, to this property nearby, which is a, a country inn and suites by Radisson and it has a green mill uh, as well. So it is a nice amenity for, uh, for tenants or if they have clients coming into town, uh, et cetera. Next slide. The key financials on this, right now this thing generates a fairly good NOI, albeit you know it's uh, about 60% occupied. So as is, it's generating 865,000. Today as stabilized 1.3 million in NOI. So you can see the large jump to value here. And the way we're gonna create that value is first, we're gonna start with some key renovation items. Um, it's, it's outdated, there's opportunities to manage this thing more properly and really drive the financials. So as you can see, thanks for pulling that picture up, Mike. You can see the parking lot's pretty shot. We're gonna do a new parking lot. We're gonna paint the exterior uh, and do some new lighting. This is a very similar project to uh, Pentagon Park in Edina. Uh, Hillcrest has done a phenomenal job with that property, and I think they added more buildings than three, quite the large office park. So we're going to do something similar to that, spruce up the outside, make it look really nice and inviting. And uh, we'll do some interior updates as well to this thing. So we'll replace 
some of the old HVAC equipment uh, on the on the buildings on the interior. We're going to do new carpet paint. Really, carpet and paint is really just a key item uh, that that can really turn a building. Um, if you're an investor out there and you're doing your own stuff, new carpet and paint job makes all the difference in the world. Um, certainly for these types of properties, especially these older office buildings that have just kind of sat the same way since probably the 70s or the 80s. And then we'll do some tenant improvements. We'll find a new tenant on the uh, probably the third floor. You can see the aerial view here. Uh, that's Mike. Mike is pulling up. So uh, there's 3M's headquarters. And then, of course, you're right off the freeway there in Woodbury. So right outside of St. Paul, it's within the loop. And Woodbury is growing like crazy uh, right now. Go to the next slide, Mike. Strengths on this building right now, great location. Woodbury, there's significant growth in the area. Uh, we got this thing at a pretty low basis, which means we can offer a competitive rent rate. So if you think about nearby buildings as potentially being a threat and competing for office space, other buildings in the area, sure, they're nicer, they're newer, they've got nice amenities, but we can offer a, a product in space at a very low uh, rent rate, which is how we underwrote this deal. And I think there's a lot of opportunity to grow rents over time here. But it gives us a competitive advantage in the market, certainly on the office out in Woodbury. We're going to do some renovation. We've got 50% occupancy, and uh, we're going to drive the value up with uh, uh, the lease up. Thank you, Mike. Last property here, again, on that spectrum that I talked about, this one is uh, almost a fully stabilized property. So now we're on the other end of the spectrum here. This is, again, the building that we own the neighboring building just to the south, right on the bluff, just south of 494 on 35W. So you can probably see this thing from the freeway. We painted our building here, which Mike has pulled up. The big white building there is all office, 63,000 square foot of rentable office that we bought last April. We painted it really nice blue. Um, it, it sticks out for sure. There's nice up lights on that as well in, uh, if you're driving by at night. So this property is a flex building. There's a nice view of it there. So this building is a flex property. So you've got, you've got kind of your office in the front showroom, and then you've got uh, your industrial uh, in the back there on the uh, north side. So Mike, if you want to go to some of the financials here, any comments, Mike, you want to make on this thing? Uh what what's nice about this particular deal is now we own from this tree line here all the way through, which means we could feasibly develop a right here along here. We could add another building on the highway side to make a three building campus. Or the other option so that's is the package that up as a multifamily development. Correct, yep. And there's actually a county owned parcel on the bluffs here. You can get uh, get a higher acreage so that you can get more density. Um, the, the, the main challenge about doing a large multifamily, which would be prime here. I mean, the, the, views, uh, the views are unmatched. Um, when you actually look at the views from this particular location overlooking um, overlooking the bluffs here. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible. Let me just rotate this around for you. So it's hard to tell from Google earth here, but from here you can see the entire river Valley all the way. So it'd be a really cool apartment. The only challenge to making it an apartment building is the fact that it, um, it doesn't have a lot of retail in the area. So that's the, that's kind of the main challenge to a redevelopment there uh, to go to multifamily. Yeah, good point. Uh, so again, this thing almost fully stabilized, you know, right now it generates uh, solid income and, and we'll grow it, uh, you know, a bit over over uh, just lease up and re, uh, releasing uh, with current tenants. They have a strong tenant mix there. Uh, so, it's really uh, rent growth and, and potential redevelopment opportunity. Uh, the, the, the weakness here, it is off the freeway, but you do have to kind of tuck around to get to the building. 
uh, which is probably the only thing we really see as a weakness here on the building. As far as threats go, we'd have to see a pretty substantial crash uh, in the economy for this thing to even be at any risk um, from a from an economic standpoint. So it's a great asset to have in the fund here. Awesome. I'll turn it back over to you, Mike. Yeah, great flyover, James. James, uh, James is heavy into the underwriting on these deals right now. So very detail oriented. And we actually developed an underwriting app inside of our software to streamline that process for us, which uh, really helps us keep on track and is how we're able to do this many deals at once. We have probably capacity to double or triple this right now with uh, with the new team we're putting together. So we're really excited about what the future holds for the fund and our franchise operational growth. Uh, here, I just wanted to help people understand the fund structure. If, if you're new to the fund, this is basically how it works. Every time we buy a property, we form a new LLC. The reason we do that is to insulate it against like slip and fall type claims. If somebody slips on a property and hurts themselves and they sue, they can only sue the owner. So we have the LLC specifically for that. Then we get a liability insurance and then we insulate on top of that with a huge umbrella policy that covers all of our properties. So the general partner of each of these LLCs is different for each deal. For all of these particular ones, it's gonna be CIG Holdings locally, but let's say that there's a franchisee, I'll show you in a moment. The franchisee might be the general partner for their market. The general partner or GP is the one who basically signs on the debt personally, does all the work, finds the deal, underwrites it, all of that stuff. What the fund is, is the fund is a limited passive partner. So the fund actually in the operating agreement for each of these properties, is indemnified against any legal liability. So not only do we have the LLC laws and a way to cover us here, we have insurance as well as this indemnification. So the fund itself is actually not on the hook. So if one property were to have issues, it wouldn't jeopardize all of the properties inside the fund. Um, and, and we structured it that way for a purpose. Now let's talk about what the ownership of the fund looks like. We have various capital partners. Uh, Corey McClure is a capital partner and we have a couple other capital partners we're looking at. And then we raise capital in-house, um, me and my team. And then we have limited partners who are the people who actually put up the capital, that's you guys. There's two ways to buy membership units. You can either put in cash or you can contribute property in exchange for membership units through a 721 exchange. And then the last thing I'll show you here is this is what it might look like if a franchisee is the deal sponsor, they would be replacing CIG Holdings. Um, this is a property that uh, one of our franchisees has under contract in Colorado Springs, and I'm really excited for them as they raise capital as well. So being an investor in our network, you'll not only have access to our fund, but we may uh, selectively invite you from time to time to invest directly in individual syndications uh, on a case by case basis. So what's the big picture look like? When you take the $2 million 1031 tick off the table, we're raising 5.725 million in this tranche. We anticipate that to grow to about $8 million in equity in two to three years. Uh, I'm shooting for closer to two years on that. The project cash flow on day one is 469,000. And we think we're gonna be able to grow that to 1.4 million, which takes the cash on cash from six to 18 at the project level. So you're probably wondering, well, what can I expect? Um, and here's the answer to that. There's three different classes of membership units. The first class is the 100 to 250 range. So if you put in 100 to 250, here's what you can expect. In tranche one here, since we're buying two properties that are not stabilized yet, it brings the cash on cash down in year one, but you get a heavier value growth once the fund actually gets going, then we'll have a, a base of stabilized properties. So the cash flow is going to continue to improve over the years. Um, so for year one in this category, you can expect a 6% preferred return. In year two, you can expect 8%. And then years three through nine, around 10% on your money. 
And we believe that your unit value would grow at about 6% per year. And it will be assuming a 10 year exit, 160% of your original value. I think this estimate is extremely conservative. Um, let's talk about the 250 to 499 range. Here's what you can expect. It's basically the same numbers, just add 1%. So you get a 1% bonus if you invest 250 or more. And then at the 500 level, you actually get a 2% bonus. You get a higher preferred return. And it's the same upside split. At the 500K, you also get an optional seat on our board of advisors. And what that'll allow you to do is attend some other meetings and see additional visibility and be able to get your voice heard for some of the decisions we're making inside of the fund. Um, but really it's just an opportunity to learn. So if this stuff excites you and you're like, well, I might do three or 400, I would encourage you to get to that 500 if you really wanna learn and get a seat at the table from that side. With that being said, all of our investors get quarterly reports for those of you most of you who have subscribed to the fund have invested with us over and over. So you know that we do nice detailed quarterly reports with financials. You get distributions made by check or direct deposit into your account. And we do quarterly distributions. So for example, if you did a 500K investment, you're gonna get 2% per quarter, which shakes out to $10,000 per quarter starting. And then that would grow to 12.5. And then eventually that would grow to 15,000. Uh, per quarter in years three through nine. Now the tax loss is also something exciting. Your capital, let's say you contributed $500,000. I'm anticipating you would actually get a write-off of about $250,000 on day one. If you contribute, let's say $100,000, you would get about a $50,000 write-off for the 2022 tax year. Why are we able to give such large write-offs in year one? The reason is because we do, uh, there's a little loophole in the tax code that allows us to do what's called a cost segregation study. And that allows us to segregate the components of a building into different tax buckets. So normally for commercial property, you, you separate out the land, that's not depreciable. And then you depreciate the balance of the building at over 39 years. What a cost segregation will allow you to do is actually break that down even further into five, seven, 15, and 39 year property. And then the current tax laws allow us to, to write off the five, seven, and 15 year property completely in the year we acquire the property. So this is like 27, $28 million in cost basis we're going to have here. And so we're going to probably get like a, a six or $7 million write off here in year one just from these properties. And we're expecting quite a few more this year to come online. What's also cool is because you're in a multi-asset fund, instead of just getting normal depreciation, which would be about 2.5% per year, you're actually going to get much higher because you benefit from the cost segregation we do on properties we buy in subsequent rounds. And you also get diversification across those properties. So every time we do a new tranche, we revalue the portfolio. Let's say six months from now, I do another tranche for $7 million and I raise capital. Well, it's not a dollar per unit at that time. It might be a dollar and four cents because we've created some value. So the people who buy in in that round will pay fair market value, but that fair market value should be a higher number than it is today. That round of properties, we will also cost segregate and you get your proportionate share of those write-offs. So every year you're getting not only these cool quarterly distributions and the value growth as we create value in every round of properties that we buy, but you're also getting the huge tax benefits of the acquisitions of those properties. So that's kind of an overview of what your expected returns look like. Let's talk about what next steps are. Uh, the first step is if we haven't had a call, uh, let's start there. But if you've already known us, attended our events, and you don't have any questions and you're ready to sign up, uh, you have the link that uh, you can go read the full private placement memorandum. And then just let me know in there, there's a green button I'll show you in a second you can use to, to submit your investment. And then I'll prepare a subscription agreement which subscribes you to the fund. Uh, for this first tranche, we need funds by May 13th, and the wiring instructions are inside the portal. 
I'm going to show you the portal in a second, but you can track your investments and the performance in there. That's where you put in your banking information for where you want your quarterly distributions. And you can also contribute additional capital. And I also, I want to talk about uh, telling your friends. Unfortunately, I can't directly pay you a referral commission, but I want to help you understand that you are in a position to send an email to other people who have money and copy me and make an introduction. And by doing so, if they end up investing in the fund, A, they're going to be really happy with you in the long run because this fund is, is going to kick butt. I'm personally putting 500000 here into Tranche 1. And uh, I'm really excited about continuing to, to grow my portion of the portfolio with my units. The other thing that you guys need to know is that every single key team member on my team is getting company options. And what we're doing is our retirement plan at Commercial Investors Group is that we do uh, CIG value add fund matching. So at the end of the year, all the employees can contribute to this fund and we do matching on that. So who better to own part of the fund than the people driving the value growth? And that's what's really exciting to me about offering this as a long-term retirement plan to our employees. Forget having to wait till you're 60 years old to enjoy your retirement. My vision for our people is unlocking their financial freedom today. So that's allowing people to participate in this equity fund with their own cash. We're contributing part of our profits back to match them. And then they get to grow their residual income as we grow our portfolio. And so they're incentivized every day to make the right long-term decisions and work that extra bit to make sure that the value and the distributions are on par. What it also means is the more that you refer us out and people contribute to the fund, the more assets we're going to be able to buy, which means more depreciation for you, more value growth, and ultimately more cash flow for you. So you don't directly benefit by way of a commission, but you do indirectly benefit by additional distributions, better tax shelter, and more value growth. There's a question, Mike, here. I want to quickly okay. uh, um, answer here. Let's get to that. Hang on a sec. Basically, can the 500000 be through multiple distributions or only one? Okay. Uh, so the 500,000 total uh, can be through multiple investing entities. An investing entity can be a person, it can be an LLC, it can be a company, it can be an IRA, and it can be a 401k. We accept all of those as investing entities. So let's say you're like, well, I wanna do 150 through my IRA, I'm gonna do 100 through my 401k and I'm gonna do 250 in cash. I'll still put you in at the 500K mark with the 8% preferred return on all of those positions. So let's, uh, let's jump over and take a look at the investor portal here. If you don't have the investor portal link, we'll make sure we get that to you. So this is the public link here where you can learn more about the investment. Here's that original presentation. I'll get a link to the replay on this. And this has the summary on here. It has uh, all the details and you can read a little bit more about me and James. But basically this is where you come to log in. So when you log in, you're gonna be able to actually see the underlying items. So here's me logging in. So I can actually come see new offerings. So you can see I've committed 500,000 to this particular thing. Um, and once you actually log in, you'll be able to see the offering memorandum, the, which is the PPM. You'll see the slide deck. You just, you have a little bit more transparency into what's going on here. And all you need to do is um, you'll click on the green invest button. I've already submitted mine, but when you're in, you'll click this button. You'll type in your information and just put in the amount you desire to, um, to commit to the fund here. If you're not accredited, then you'll be rejected. But assuming you are, you just hit yes and do request access and we'll get you set up in there. And then we can also do a call. So if this is just, I guess, what I call a soft commitment. So uh, if, if you want more information, I recommend you go get your soft commitment in, get submitted, and let's hop on a call. I'll get you guys all my Calendly 
link as well, uh, as well as my cell phone number. And I'm happy to take individual calls here to answer any questions. The deadline again is May 13th. We are anticipating this to fill up fairly quickly. So um, I recommend that you guys move on this if you wanna get involved in tranche one. Of course, we'll be doing additional rounds in the future and uh, love to have you as part of our ecosystem. So thank you so much for taking the time here on your Friday to attend this. I'd like to open it up for a few minutes of question and answer. Um, so you can go ahead and either raise your hand or submit a question through the chat and we'll unmute you as uh, necessary here. Okay, I don't see any questions coming in. All right, I'll give it another minute here. See if anybody has any questions. I'll also pull up my information here for you guys. Okay, here's one. Uh, the question is, how would the distributions affect someone who's a Florida resident? So the properties that are in Minnesota are taxed. Uh, you'll, you'll have to file a Minnesota return for those. So I believe you will pay the state income tax on your distributions there but you should always check with your CPA. That's a tax related question. Um, if you're asking whether you would pay the Florida taxes or not, I think you would because the business is actually being operated in Minnesota. But um, it's probably best that you check with your CPA on that particular question, but uh, it's a really good question. Yep, there's there's no state income tax. Uh, they said no income taxes in Florida. There's no state income tax in Florida, but like right now, if I was a permanent resident in Florida and I was operating these rental properties here, I would still have to file a Minnesota return and pay the Minnesota state income taxes. I think the exemption for Florida is only if it's a business you're operating out of Florida and there's still federal income tax. Now, remember, when you invest in this fund, you're not actually going to have a, uh, a gain for probably many years. You're going to have taxable losses. And depending on if you qualify as a real estate professional or not, and this isn't tax or accounting advice, I'm just going to tell you my understanding of this. If you work 750 hours or more as a real estate professional, so something real estate related, mortgage, construction, um, and you can document that and you qualify as a real estate professional, I believe you can use passive losses on something like this to offset ordinary gains. So let's say you're a real estate agent, you're making 150, 200 grand a year and you invest in this. I think you can use the loss from this to offset your actual regular income from your real estate commissions, which is huge. All right, well, I'm gonna throw my email in the chat, as well as my cell phone number. Feel free to text me or email me and we can get something scheduled or just give me a good old fashioned phone call. I really appreciate you guys jumping on. Hopefully this was uh, an educational experience for you and I'm excited to talk further. Thanks so much.